Okay, here with uh, John Ryder today. John, another sparring session in the bank, a couple of weeks out. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling good. I mean, um, I've had a good good week this week. I've got some good rounds in the bank. Um, I mean, what, we're two weeks out now. We've got a week left of hard training, sparring. And then the countdown really begins till the fight week. This fight with Kamitsky, I mean, it is pretty make or break for yourself um, after the the Blackwell defeat, you come back and box towards the end of last year. So, I mean, have you got that fear factor in this fight? 100%. I mean, I'm doing things differently now, and majorly differently, that, things I've never done before. So, yeah, I mean, the element of fear is in me. I, I know what Kamitsky can do and what he's capable of, and, and, and he's a dangerous opponent. Take, don't worry about his age. The last thing to go in a fight is their power, so I mean, that's going to be with him until till the end, you know what I mean? And the fact that he's boxed at super middle against Frank Bugliani and other people, and he's obviously coming down to box yourself. I mean, do you think that plays into your hands at all? Uh, no, not really. I mean, he showed good power at super middleweight, and then he's come down and showed even better power at middleweight. So, um, I mean, he is probably a natural middleweight, but he, he floats about and takes the opportunities where he can. But no, I think I think he'll be at his best. He's had he's had a good long camp himself, so. I think I'll get the best Kaminsky on the night. It's probably quite nice for yourself to finally get him in the ring. He's, you know, you were supposed to fight him some time ago, but it didn't happen to sort of one reason or another. So is he is he someone that you, you've always felt you'd fight at some point? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's over a year ago now that I was meant to fight him, and it didn't happen for one reason or another. But I mean, you look back now and you look at the mistakes I've made since then, and you think, oh, do you know what? I, that fight could happen a year, a year ago, and it could have been a different outcome, but now I'm, I'm more better prepared mentally and physically and I see it as a fight I'll definitely win now, whereas who knows a year ago, do you know what I mean? You said you've made some changes since the Blackwell fight, I mean, is, without going into too much detail, is that kind of diet, is that training or...? Uh, everything really, I'm, I've diet, training, um, personal life, just, yeah, a lot's changed, I'm, um, I'm, on, I'm on it, I'm on the, I'm on the game, so, listen, you can learn from other people's mistakes, but you, you learn the best when you make your own mistakes. So I've made them and I don't look to go back and make any more. Without looking ahead from this fight, because you wouldn't, you know, you'd be a bit naive to do so, knowing you, you wouldn't do that anyway. Um, British title, was that still a goal for yourself at some point? You want to get back in and sort of compete for that? Uh, I really don't know. I mean, I'm just going to take this fight as it comes. And after that, to see see what the outcome is and see what, sit down with Eddie and Tony and see where we go from there. But, I mean, I'm, I'm solely focused on this and then see how this goes and go from there. The middleweight division's had a lot of attention recently. You had Billy Joe Saunders against Andy Lee. Um, were you quite surprised that he put Andy Lee down a couple of times? Uh, yeah, I was. I mean, I, I know Billy Joe, he's, he's, not, he's not a banger, but he, he's got, he carries a bit of power. And you know Andy Lee's been, been over before, but normally he gets up and comes back pretty strong. But... Um, Listen, on the, on the night, someone just shows what he can do and that he is world class and look at him now, he's world champion. He's done, he's done really well. And do you take, I guess, inspiration from that to an extent, the fact that you sort of pushed him 12 rounds and a lot of people, you know, some people said you won that fight, other people said he'd done it. I know it's some time ago now, but you must look at that and think, well, look, a couple of wins under my belt, I'm not too far away from getting back to that sort of level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was, that was two years ago and, I mean, what with things like injuries and all that, I got held back and then... Other things, but yeah, I mean, I believe I belong to that class and get a win on the 30th and, and prove it. And you know, what I mean, you're never, you're never too many fights away from shots like that, are you? No, definitely not. And Nick Blackwell, he's actually boxing uh, Chris Eubank Jr. I think that's due to be announced soon. I mean, how do you see that fight going? I think a lot of people think, you know, Junior's going to win it quite easily, but I think it'll be a tougher than what people expect. No, no, I don't think you can write Nick Blackwell off. And one thing he's got is the heart of a lion. Do you know what I mean? Showed it against me. He was, I'd say, he was six down, six rounds down at the, well, in the seventh or something. Six rounds down, and I mean, he still kept fighting back and pulled it out of the bag. So you can never write him off. And Eubank Jr. is is, is a class act. I mean, Blackwell's not in there to make the numbers up. He's there to to be a good champion, and I'm sure he'll do well. So what's your prediction for that fight? Who are you sort of leaning towards? Um, I'll lean towards Eubank. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just a fight. I, I find it hard to call. I mean, it all depends who it comes down to on the day who's who's prepared. I mean, none of them will leave a stone on terms. I mean, they both got good trainers behind them, and they'll, they'll 
train, they'll know what's at stake. I mean, there's a lot at stake for you, Bank. With a, he's in, he's a manager position for a world title. So I mean, it seems like a strange step backwards to come and fight Nick, but um, it's something he wants to do. So fair play to him. Got to take your hat off to him. Obviously, from your side, you've become a father. Your daughter's, you know, coming up kind of to sort of two. Um, so obviously, from you know your perspective as as a father now, do you all kind of I guess what you want out of boxing long term is that kind of giving you extra motivation to be the best you can be and provide for your own family. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, um, as as a as a younger man, you just want money, cars, houses, what whatnot. But I mean, now it's about securing something for her. I mean, getting a, a house paid off and bought and paid for, just so she's got a secure future and getting money in the bank so she can have. A college, university education if she wants it. So, yeah, I mean, everything, everything now is for her. And do you think that's that's going to make you a better fighter? Sort of, I, I guess, like probably once she was born, you know, you kind of, you, you sort of focus changes a bit more. You think, right, I'm kind of, I'm providing now. I've got to start doing it for her and not just yourself. You know, so. Uh, to an extent, yeah. I mean, but um, I've been, I think, I put too much pressure on myself before. As being like I've got to provide for her, and you don't. We're in this win boxing. I mean, if I don't do boxing, I do something else. I'll, I'll earn a living. Do you know what I mean, I'll get by. But I don't just want to get by. I want to succeed and do something well and do better. So, I mean, I'm hoping that dedicate my life to boxing for a few more years and leave no stone unturned that I can achieve that. And you sort of said there, like, obviously your motivation. Do you think that that might have kind of been like a, a slight factor outside the ring in the Blackwell fight, you might have been a bit too obsessed with the fact that you, you had to really provide for her and and maybe there was a bit of added pressure going into it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this at the end of the day, I can go and work Monday to Friday on a building site and get a decent wage and pay the bills and pay the rent and get by and have a holiday every year. But, I mean, I want to do more than just just the average and provide a better life. Do you know what I mean? If, if Life A would do, and Life B can be better. I want to go for Life B and make everything a bit nicer, that bit grander. So we're, we're, we're going to give it our best shot. That's the thing, mate. If, if it's easy, everyone can have it, and you're doing, you know, you're doing one of the toughest jobs in the world. So that's um, it. I mean, I don't want something everyone's got. I want something a little bit different. So we continue to work hard, and I've, I've got a really supportive girlfriend and a lot of support from family. So couldn't ask for any more. Do you know what I mean, so they're all behind me and. Urging on to succeed. No, good stuff, mate. Well, John, look, thanks for your time, mate. Um, best of luck with the remainder of your camp. Look forward to a big performance against Kamitsky, obviously. Um, prediction, do you think it's going to go the distance or do you think you might stop him a bit late? Or? Um, um, I know what Kamitsky can do and I mean, he very rarely gets stopped. So I'm prepared for 12 hard rounds. Um, listen, if anything else comes, it's a bonus, but I know what I'm ready for. That's why I'm to be very easy at the end of a 12 fight round and to be, to be the winner. Right, John, best of luck, mate. And we'll catch up with your fight week. Cheers. Take it easy. Cheers.